It's back to one of my old areas I haven't been to in probably 15 years. I drove off the logging road a ways. I stopped at a nice pullout. It's nice I got this across the road. So I know no one has been in here yet this year. So everything should be fresh signs and good chance of finding antlers. So the area I'm hiking up in today, I'm right on the border of Mount Robson Park. It's like the last set of logging blocks before the park. When I moved to British Columbia in 2004, after forest ranger school, this is actually the first set of blocks I ever worked in. And it's been deactivated for years, completely overgrown. We did a good selective cut, so except for the road, you can't even really tell it was logged here. Except just off to the east of here, I'm hoping to get into a little of it. There was a forest fire four years ago. A tree fell across the power lines down the highway, lit the whole hillside up. So it'd be interesting to see what that looks like four years later. Not sure what I'll get into today, but it's pretty rugged country. So coming up here, I walked up a ways of the road. It's been cleared out, but a couple, a couple few years ago, and then I ran into this. I'm saying that's pointing an arrow and they have that road mark. So I'm guessing when they were fighting the fire, firefighters cleared out, were coming up and took this out to hit the fire on the side flank. And then this is the main road going up. Looks like it's grown in quite heavy. I'm gonna to try to go up. It's interesting though, being back in an area I worked that long ago, just the best selective cut. It's as good as logging gets. You can barely even tell it's logged. There's a stream running here. That's why there's all this young willow and alder coming up. So lots of moose sign coming up. You can see there on the aspen tree, the moose have been eating the bark on this guy that fell over. Some woodpecker holes in that tree up there. It's a crazy amount of wildlife up here. This place is amazing. All overgrown and kind of untouched now. And if you're hearing weird noises in the background, there's train tracks at the bottom of this valley and it's such a tight valley that the noise just echoes everywhere. And I'm not huge on the tree breaks, but I have the whole trail up. Been noticing just the odd guy bent over. Usually snow load, you'll get a whole pile of them in one spot, not just random. One here, one there. It's just interesting to think about. Just checking the ground the whole way up. Just came into a pile of wolf scat. Full of fur, looks like deer fur. Doesn't surprise me at all. Lots of wolves down around Mount Robson. I've heard them there multiple times. So I know I said I was going to stop on glass and then I realized I was only a couple hundred meters off the edge of this old fire. 
This is all pine that burnt up and is just standing dry wood. Looked like it burned pretty hot, but uh, there's a lot of new stuff coming back underneath. I studied fire a lot in forest ranger school, would have never fought fires or been involved with it since, so it's interesting to come see. And then when I walked into here just over there, I just spooked up a herd of, I don't know, five, six, maybe more mule deer. I'm gonna take a little walk around here. This is interesting. It's really interesting up in here. It's kind of like happy, sad. You know, you lost a bunch of trees in this fire. It's a beautiful area, beautiful forest, but pine trees are made to burn. They have what's called the serotonous cone. Like there's one that didn't open up and they need heat to open up and release their seeds. And what's happened is just we haven't had any big fires in a couple hundred years and everything has been put out. The beetle took over, lined it up perfect for fire. And like there's a difference. There's a seed cone that got the heat and open and shot seeds. And then when you go through here, the forest floor is just all young pine trees. So it's actually going to be a very healthy forest. From a logging point of view, this sucks, but for the actual good of the world and nature, this is actually really good what happened here. A nice smaller controlled fire, this is going to be a beautiful stand in 100, 150 years, and there's lots of new growth. Right, that group of deer went up the side, I saw them again, too far out, couldn't get any film of them, but it's nice to know there's a group of deer here too, because that means there's not a big cougar lurking around and there's probably not a grizzly bear which this area is very heavy on both of those things. Just fascinating. I've never walked through a fire kind of like this before. Here's all the young lodgepole pine coming up. Probably only one, two years old. So it means there was like two, three years, nothing grew. And then everything came up. The wind is picking up pretty good though. And this place could get really sketchy in a windstorm. So I'm going to watch that. realizing this fire is just the ultimate camo for animals. They can see right through it. And it's so easy for them to just blend in. I don't know if you can see there's a mule deer right in the middle of the screen there. He's about 50 feet away. Just frozen and then there's a group of eight of them probably right up behind them. Those deer and I just keep circling each other. They blend in pretty good. I wouldn't have even seen them there if it wasn't for this spot of tracks right there where the soil's red underneath the burnt soil. I found that and then followed it up and saw them. It is hiking through here is fascinating. It's a really loud day, it's windy, trains echoing lots of animals and all these black burnt stems in a row like this played as tricks on you it's like those 3d images you squint at hard and then something pops out at you it'd be really easy to miss see stuff here so i got up out of that fire i hiked way up and got onto the road again the road kind of snakes up the mountainside, so I should be able to take this back down and see if there's any other spots I want to go off. And again, if you hear weird noises in the background, the trains are just running crazy. I had no idea it would echo this bad here. And the higher I get up, it's like the louder the noise is. So we're talking tree breaks again. This is what I expect in snow load. It gets heavy on the snow. The ground's really wet here. The tree kind of leans over. That's normal. These other ones I've seen all over this road though, they're broken at like six feet and they're random where they're at. 
one answer, snowmobiles. People are snowmobiling, they can break the trees off. That makes sense, but then you'll have like two, three in a row, not one broken with one on either side, still good. It's just making me think is all, there's a few things that just don't add up on this road. And another pile of moose cat. I'm actually surprised with the amount I've seen on this road. There's seriously a pile of moose scat every 50 feet. I'm also shocked I haven't found any antler sheds yet. I'm stopped here for a little drink of water and bite to eat. Gorgeous spring day. Big time bear country I'm in. I'm actually surprised I didn't see any. Just wanted to show what I carry. I don't carry a gun. I don't like carrying a gun in the woods. I used to, but I find when you carry a gun, you become very dependent on the safety of having a gun. And most guns people carry are not gonna stop a grizzly bear anyways. It's just gonna piss it off. And then work in forestry, a lot of the jobs we go to, you're not allowed to carry a gun. So you get used to having a gun on you every day. Go to go to work, now you're not allowed to bring one. So I'd rather just be used to it, getting the mindset of not having one. You're kind of more aware, kind of more natural. So first thing is bear banger. Always carry these. I also, I carry a bunch of spare bangers and flares too. So flares can light fires. You can shoot a flare to bear if you want. Shoot a flare in the air, signal people. These shoot out about probably 30, 40 feet. Blast off, sound like a shotgun. That is probably the number one thing. If you have that, you don't really need anything else with a bear. I also carry a can of bear mace on my belt. Two things to always watch out for on the bottom, expiry date, don't use old mace. And always check in there to make sure it's not full of twigs and mud. I've heard of people going to use it and it's all full of dirt and it doesn't spray off. And then just in case things did get bad, I carry a big sharp knife on my belt. And today where it was heavy grizzly area, I brought my ox head ax, razor sharp. Yeah, and that's what I carry for bear season. You gotta always think here, we're in big grizzly area, big black bear area. Had run-ins with them here before. I wasn't sure with the fire, but I was actually expecting to see bears today. I'm surprised I haven't. It is early in the year though. The wind is freaky in these woods too. With the fire, everything's so dry and crisp, the trees just crack and pop. You're always hearing stuff. This is walking back the road I walked up there now. Definitely going down memory lane here. This is when I first graduated Forest Ranger School, came here 2004, first hillside I worked on. Times were a little different back then. The first two weeks, they just put you with the fastest guy and ran the snot out of you to see if you'd last. I, I will not forget Derek is the guy who ran me. And uh, great area here. I was so fresh off the boat. My gear was destroyed in a week. My boots, my f feet froze off me. I didn't know. The spot here forever is the first spot in my career. And I've always loved it for that. It's great coming back. I'd like to come here again too. I'm gonna try to find one of these lower roads. Maybe that one the firefighters marked and go out there. Still got some gas in the legs. I just didn't want to head up too higher. I took that road the firefighters marked and it just was a little short spur, came out to a landing. It looks like in the corner over here, this is where their trail up into the fire was. I got her all marked out with blue ribbon. Got like a quad trail cut. I'm not sure if they had maps of the area though. Cause they came in here 
but they could have gone not much further and had a road right through the middle of it. It's a pretty good trail they cut though. Yeah, right into it right there. And I was a ways up on that next ridge where I went into it. Okay, I get that now. That was a nice landing that came off. Short trail in. They could get a quad in. And they came in here, there's this big bench and they cut everything down, so they probably made a fire break here. And as I'm talking, a deer just took off right there. Man, the mule deer are everywhere up here. I guess they're after all the new growth. It's interesting. So I walked a ways out that fire break. I see what they did now. They had this big rocky spine. So they could use this as a natural barrier. Dropped all the trees beside it. Pretty rugged ground here. It's almost back to the truck hiking down the road. Pretty good day. It's getting pretty hot out. It's got to be high teens, almost pushing 20. It was a good walk. I enjoyed up in the fire. There's deer everywhere, animals everywhere, birds, lots of noises. Surprised I didn't find any antlers. I enjoyed being here though. Not sure if there's any roads I can hit between me and the truck. If there is, I might poke out another one. If not, this would probably be it.